these are seven plus one new things in SOLIDWORKS 2022, which are amazing. And I want you to learn it because I know you will appreciate it. Let's get to it. The first feature that I want to show you is slicing, which you can see I have already added it to my features tab. It doesn't belong to the feature tools, but if you search for it here, slicing, you will see there is a new tool here. What you can do with this new feature is up to you. You can be creative, but one example for it is when you import a non SLDP or RT format, which is the typical format for SOLIDWORKS. For example, when you insert an STL file like this one into SOLIDWORKS, you cannot edit that component because that component is shown as graphic on the left. I have inserted the wrong component. Let me just see if I can find the SLD that I have prepared before. Like this one, when you insert an STL file into SOLIDWORKS, you can see on the design tree that it shows as graphic one and you cannot see any features. So editing this would be a challenge. Now with this new tool slicing, you could create multiple layers of plane with a certain distance between them and create the cross section of that object on those planes then later on you can use loft to recreate that component as a typical format of solidworks sldprt and save it and work on it let me show you this is that component now i'm going to pick a plane let's just pick something like this one you can see and now i'm going to have four five six with a distance of 10 between them maybe 20 and these are going to be my components maybe 25 so i can reach the top too much some calculation is needed you know you need to know the height of your component and so on and so forth so let's just leave it at that and click ok when i do that you will see i have created the sketch on the cross section of each plane and if i get rid of my component and hide it i can try to recreate that component using these sketches using loft now i know it has a lot of broken entities but it's still doable depending on your computer you can see that first sketch second sketch and you can take it from there okay now you can use loft to connect these cross sections together and recreate that component i know it can take a lot of time because there are so many small entities and depending on the computing power of your pc it can take longer or shorter that was number one the second feature that i wanted to show you which is amazing i wish we had it sooner is partial chamfering as well as partial filleting so when we fillet or chamfer an edge it would just automatically select all of that and it would go all around as you can see the preview if i select it it selects the whole edge and if it's connected tangentially to another edge it will go all the way to the end sometimes it is not wished so we can just go to this new section on the property manager of fillet in this case check partial edge parameters then we will see that we have we should be having two endpoints but since this is a circle I assume I just found the bug on this new feature. Okay, this is the bug for it, I'm calling it. Once you have a closed edge like a circle, since there is no start and end, you will not see it. This is the shortcoming of this new feature, but let me just uh, demonstrate that on a different example, maybe on a non-circular edge, something like this. All right, now I'm going to select this edge and then select fillet and then check partial fillet and in this case i do see the start point and end point in purple as well as green point if i drag this purple point here first of all let me just change the values too big i just do it one and then drag the green point up there you can see i can adjust the length of my fillet and if i click ok i have only filleted this distance which is amazing it should have been there but i love it that it's here now i'm going to use it a lot in my daily modeling on the other edge, I'm going to do the same only on chamfer. It's a little bit different. When you do this on the default selection of chamfer, you may not see the partial chamfering mode. And that's because you are on chamfer type called angle distance. You want to change it to offset face. Then you get to see the partial edge parameters. Again, you see the purple point, which you can drag as well as the green point, which you can drag as well. The number is again too much. You just change it to one and you can see you can partially chamfer an edge. Great new feature. That was the second one that SOLIDWORKS has added. The third one, very good feature is modifying a circular pattern whether on a feature or solid body let's just create something too circular pattern it first just say this rod 
I want to have six of them around the circumference of this circular edge. So I'm going to pick this feature and do it around this six of them, right? And since the equal spacing is activated, each one of them are at a 60 degree angle. Now, if I click on instances to vary, which is the new feature we didn't have before, first of all, you cannot select equal spacing anymore because it does not apply anymore. You're going to change each and every one of them or at least one of them. So it automatically jumps on instance spacing. Fine. Now we see a purple point on the center of each instance. When I click on it, I can click on skip or modify instance. And when I do that, instead of 60, I can type 75 and it moves. I can do it for every individual instance. This is at 300 because it's the fifth instance. Now we're gonna do it at 290. It just goes up and then we click, okay, look. This is amazing. It would have taken much longer because we would have needed to do this manually, but now it's SolidWorks 2022. You have the option to do this at one go. Amazing, I love it. The next one, which is also amazing, is mm. double mirroring. A new feature that allows you to mirror about two planes at one go. You can see we have the typical classical mirror face plane and now we have a secondary mirror face plane. I'm gonna pick a body which is this one and then select the first face which is this and now I'm gonna select the secondary and look at one go I have created four of these uh, solid bodies in one feature. Mirror around two planes or faces. This is great. Number five is edge flange and that goes for sheet metals. I'm gonna leave this one for the end. We're gonna go ahead and do number six, which is color picker. When you're going to change the appearance of your solid body or feature, doesn't matter, you've had this color picker here, but it was not like this before. Now I can pick color from anywhere on my screen off or on SOLIDWORKS. Just like Photoshop, I can go to Word file and pick the color from the close button, which is this red. Then it applies it to my solid body, which is amazing. If you go on, on your browser and you see a color that you like, you don't have to go find out its RGB code and then apply it here. You can just pick the color directly there and then boom, off screen, it goes to SOLIDWORKS. Great tool. Next, which is number seven, we're gonna go to texture tool but this is a little bit incomplete and it's my shortcoming because i know 3d textures are not something new they have been in solidworks before 2022 but i know in 2022 they have modified it and i don't know where that modification is so i'm sorry for that maybe i add a comment or a description or a short video later on explaining this but let me just do the typical 3d texture tool which you can find in appearances when you go down to miscellaneous you find 3d texture double click and then you see all sorts of uh, bumps and patterns that you can apply on your model maybe for for example you're going to create a grip and it shouldn't be a slippery so you want it to have some bumps on it let's just find something like uh, i don't know it looks good really doesn't matter pick anything and you apply it on a surface like here or the feature or the whole body doesn't matter i'm gonna apply it to the surface all right and then when we click on that surface we go over here to the appearance manager right click on the Honey pattern, edit appearance and mapping. Sorry, not advanced. You're still in basic, go to mapping. And over here, you can change the rotation of that as well as the size of it. But um, that doesn't matter. Advanced, if I go to advanced, do I get more tools? Yeah, I get more tools. I can change the size. Look, depends on what you want to do. Let's create um, big ones like this and leave it at that and then from here on out uh you want to apply height difference to the white areas and the black areas to do that you go to insert feature and you find 3d texture down here you select that pattern you just selected you check it here which is called honeycomb then you can see what you can change your texture refinement texture offset distance as well as maximum element size you will see what you can change based on these pictures the finer the te texture, the longer it takes to calculate, but you can see what, what you're doing. Look, I have created some bumps. You see that? It's not flat anymore. Everything that was in white is going up and how much it goes up depends on the offset distance. Okay, don't do something crazy. And it's not gonna be perfect, but it's very good 
and it's really fast uh, better than just doing it manually okay boom and now we have a surface that looks like a honeycomb i know it's created on so many small meshes and small segments on the surface so it's gonna slow your computer a little bit you might want to do it at the end or don't do it so fine because it's only needed on the surface of your model and it's better or best to do it at the end of your modeling not now element that i said i am uh, was missing from this video is the drop down menu in 2022 that allows you to quickly change between patterns like change it from honeycomb to ribbed to dot to whatever and i couldn't find where that is i just saw that in the preview they showed on the new features on solidworks anyways number eight is the section view from a cylindrical face okay when you go to the cross-sectional view over here we used to have three tabs front top and right plane you could have switched between them and if you wanted to create something customized you needed to either do it manually you know play, play, it, play it like this but it was not so easy now we have a fourth option which allows you to select uh, any cylindrical surface you know like this one and it automatically generates a cross-sectional view that cuts cylindrical surface in half and it goes through the central axis of that cylinder which is perfect now you can change the angle of that but whatever you do you're cutting that cylindrical surface in half now that's a good one and last but not least is the new feature that i told you applies to sheet metal for that i'm going to create something new and it's the edge flange now i know not a lot of you work with sheet metal so you might not understand what i'm about to show you but what i'm doing here is i'm creating a tangential path and i'm going to the sheet metal tab to extrude this doesn't matter how much and this is our base sheet now before if you wanted to add some flange over the length of the whole component we needed to add it in three steps because we have three segments they're not one and they have changed that and now we can just go to edge flange and then select all of these and we get to create that edge flange that i was talking about at one go in inside or outside doesn't matter and that's it so these are eight of the new features that i know you will appreciate in solidworks 2022 if you're not working with solidworks 2022 Maybe you want to upgrade to that. Make sure to take advantage of these new features. Also, I have a couple of announcements. One, I have created a new hobby project, which I absolutely love. And it's called the Circular Therapy Channel. Um, watch out my previous video where I show how I made that table from scratch in SolarWorks and 3D printed uh, with a printer behind me. It's really fun. I really recommend you to watch that, which shows what you can do with your SolarWorks knowledge, where you can put it into practice. And secondly, if you're after learning SolarWorks, you definitely need to check my mini series on this channel. When you go to my channel, you see five episodes which take you from point zero, but I don't think you will be needing it. So that's why you're watching this video. You're not an absolute beginner, but if you know an absolute beginner, send them to my mini series videos or my mini course on my website, which is free. Again, link in the description below or on the top right corner of the screen. I'm going to put the link to my free mini course with downloadable content and so on and so forth. You're going to love it. Thank you very much for watching. I just wanted to have a very quick and efficient video. Let me know what you have in mind. If you have any questions, I try to read all the questions and answer all of them myself. So please do leave a question like this video and if you're not subscribed you definitely need to subscribe because this is the place to learn and be creative especially using SolarWorks. i'll see you around